Welcome to another Scrap Lift Crafter Moon. Today we are going to be scrap lifting a beautiful mixed media layout from Debbie at Little Scraps of Magic. I'll have a link to her blog below so that you can see um, the layout in full, but I'll also be putting the layout up in the corner as I work. I am going to be using some bits and pieces from my stash first off. This is a photo that I took of my daughter for her senior pictures in 2014. I'm going to be using that picture. I pulled some enamel dots from some days. Miss Kimberly at I'd Rather Be Scrapbooking is an enabler and I ended up with a new die last week from Etsy. This is a piece of Vicki Booten's watercolor type paper. It's her mixed media paper. And then some various pattern papers. I have some Obed Marshall. I have three sheets of old October afternoon on my desk, as well as this is actually a piece of Maggie Holmes. I'm going to use the back side of it for white cardstock. I'm trying to use up scraps. Um, I have moving company coming this week to pack up my scrapbook room and my entire house. So I'm trying to pick up the bits and pieces from my desk. I pulled in some archival ink and some stamps to play with. I also have a Distress Oxide spray called, the newest one called Unite Uncharted Mariner and an old October afternoon um, spray called Witch's Brew. My little mini mister full of water. Some pens. And then this little tiny bowl has a couple of die cuts, a flare, a paper clip, which you can't see there, and a piece of Tim Holtz, it's a charm that I bought recently. So let's get started. I'm gonna start making my mixed media background. I am going to make a humongous mistake right off the bat. I pour too much ink on that packaging make a big mess um it does work out in the end so all is good but you'll see i have to i make a mess i clean it up with my paper towel roll and i keep working beautiful color. I absolutely adore it. Um, I don't make the same mistake and make a huge mess with this one. I just add quite a bit on the upper right hand corner and then just move it around. I am going to die cut with this new die that I was unable to purchase this week. I'm sure Kimberly is laughing at me right now and that's just fine. What are friends for? I'll get her back. I know you've seen people die cut a thousand times. I've actually die cut two of them. I'm only showing you one. with this larger photo and I end up um, having to switch it out for a smaller photo later. I do that off screen, but here I'm just kind of measuring out by eye the, the mats that are gonna go around my photo. I am gonna layer almost all of the pattern paper that I showed you at the beginning of the video. I end up not using the Obed Marshall behind the photo, but I do use it so you'll see it at the end of the video where I'm covering up yet another mistake that I've made. I'm grateful that you can't see these mistakes in my end layout. Notice that I'm not gluing anything down at this point. I put the video, the photo back up of the original layout up in the corner again so that you can see. 
The reason I'm not adhering anything yet bec is because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to lay layer them. I'm just getting an idea of how big this photo with the mat is going to be. And right as I finish it, I, I realize that it is going to be too big. It's going to take up too much of the background that I am creating. I'm going to move on in here in just a minute and I'm going to go ahead and start the stamping. I do mark behind the photo a little bit so that I see where it's covering. You can't see those marks, they're in pencil. It works out well. It just kind of keeps, gives me an idea of where everything is going to lay. Miss Debbie used quite a few different um, stamps on the, her background and I pulled several stamps. I showed you three at the beginning. I actually pulled in two more later. I don't know the branding of these um, background stamps that I'm using. I suspect they might be some old Ginny Bowling, Ginny Bowling stamps that I have had in my stash forever. When I buy new stamps now, I actually put a label on my white cardstock in the envelope so that I know who they are from. But this was when I was just starting this organization system for my stamps and I didn't do that. I'm pulling in a couple of border stamps here. I don't end up using that heart border. I end up only using those wonky chevron type um, arrows. I believe that these particular stamp sets came from old Studio Calico kits. stamps in front of you. I did do it with all of them, most of it off screen. The original layout had a couple stamped images, or I'm assuming they're stamped images. Um, hers are circles. I chose a charm for one of those images for my layout, but I found this oval stamp. It had a, a, an oval frame and then a little quote that fits neatly inside it that I use. I will stamp it here and then later off screen I fussy cut it before adding it to my layout. Miss Debbie had some pluses on her layout. They looked like that they were either die cuts or acrylic pieces. I wasn't sure which. I didn't have anything like that in my stash, so I used the Studio Calico Asterisk stamps from the set. It was a set of four. It was two solid ones and two outline ones. I ended up using the larger solid and the smaller outline stamp to put on my layout. Next, I'm gonna put a phrase on my layout. It says, the sky is the limit. I end up messing up the very top stamp that I did. It didn't stamp all the way. I tried to fix it. I messed it up. Um, it ends up being in the wrong place anyway, so I cover it up in the end. So yet another mistake from yours truly on this layout. But this just goes to show you that you can make mistakes on your layouts. It's not the end of the world. Most of the time you can fix them. And if you can't fix them, you can start over. It's just paper and ink. I apologize for the clattering that you can hear in the background. My daughter is washing dishes in the kitchen and I'm just down the hall in my bedroom and I didn't realize how loud it was until I played back my voiceover. So I apologize. But there you see me trying to fix that stamped image. It doesn't look too bad, but I don't like it. It's almost running off the page. So I just, I'm just gonna cover it up. Um, here I am going to cut down my mats that I created for the original photo because at this point I have chosen the smaller print of it. I had like six of these pictures printed out. Don't ask me why, but I did. And so I trimmed down one of the smaller ones of it and then I trimmed down all of my mats to go around. I am putting outlining around each mat that looks like that's what Debbie did in her original layout and so that I do that with mine. Um, I like to pen stitch, it looks really good. It really makes things pop. So I went ahead and added it to my layout. So I'm not planning on making each 
much margin around the photo in my layered mat to be even. I intend intentionally allow the photo to hang off the yellow mat and then I put a whiter mat with the floral piece just so that you can see the, the floral print a little bit better on this. My goal for this year was to use up all of my October afternoon papers. I don't have any full collections anymore, but I do have a fairly, about an, a half an inch thick folder of their paper and embellishments left in my stash. And I have done a really poor job this year of completing that goal. I think this is the first time in seven and a half months that I've actually pulled it out. layout was very detailed and since I'm a detailed person as well I chose to go ahead and pull that in and that is why I'm taking all of this time to pin stitch lines around each mat and all of the little tiny details that you see me add throughout this video it's just me trying to mimic the detailing in her layout her layout was just gorgeous and I want to give do diligence on trying to get mine to look as much like hers as possible. I wanted to use my white stay below pen around my photo to add the pen stitching on it. She used black on her pen stitching on her photo and I didn't because it would drown out because I have a darker background in my photo where hers was mostly light colored. My stay below pen is apparently not going to work for me today. It worked a few days ago, but it I just couldn't get it to write. So I only got a little bit along the four corners of the photo, just enough to make it pop a little. I'm ready to start to do the embellishments on my page. I put the stamped image on the lower left corner and then I put that butterfly just on top of that phrase that I had messed up at the beginning. I'm gonna layer that butterfly over the top of my charm. I also have that unicorn flare. I bought those from Yes Please. The story of the unicorn and the reason why there is a unicorn on this page is because my daughter, when she graduated from high school, she got a job and then she went to cosmetology school and she was hardly ever home. So we started calling her our little magical unicorn. And when she questioned why we called her a unicorn, we told her it's because you're magical and on the back of the flare and some pop dots on my butterfly. I also am gonna add some twine to the top of my charm. The, the butterfly I'm actually going to glue as well because it didn't feel like those pop dots had very much adhesive and I want no chance that they're gonna fall off so I add a little bit of, of my glue to the pop dots on the bottom of both of them. Off screen I cut the title Oh Yeah to mimic the title off of Debbie's layout. I thought that it was appropriate for my photo as well. I cut three of the, the same phrase and I stacked them. This looks a lot like a thickers. It just gives it a little bit more um, texture than just the phrase by itself. So off screen, I created a tiny label with the pink Obed Star, Obed Marshall Star paper that I didn't use as a mat behind my photo. I ended up covering up that stamped image with my um, title, and so I really wanted that bottom um, phrase to show. So I just re-stamped it on that paper, and then did some more outlining and re-glued, and just kind of made it work. So. Again, you've seen me make yet another mistake on a layout and fix it.
also saw that Debbie had drawn around her enamel dots and so I did the same thing. I've done this in the past and it was something that I'd forgotten about and it looks really great so I went ahead and did it again on this page and it really made those enamel dots pop so I'm glad that I took the time to do that as well. me create this layout. It was a lot of fun even though I kept making goof ups. I really enjoyed making this page and it's fun to get messy sometimes. Have a great Sunday afternoon. Wait, I'm not done. I forgot something. I took all of that time to cut those die cuts for my layout and I forgot to use them. I'm such a goofball. Have a great Sunday.